stories that matter. The journey of life from birth to death is an extraordinary trip, sometimes filled with great joy and excitement, but at other times filled with pain, sorrow, and disappointment. Stories That Matter shares both extremes with you. Sometimes our stories will make you feel very happy, but the journey of life is not all happiness. Other times, the journey of life will make you feel sad, for all of us have experienced both extremes. Stories That Matter will begin right after the break with a story that will touch your heart in the journey of life. Welcome to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Cindy Mendoza. And Cindy, you have a title for uh, a ministry that you've started. What's yeah. the name of it? It's called Cindy's Hope. Tell me how this all got started, because you've been doing this a while, and what a, what a project you've got going. Fill us in about it. Well, thank you. Um, in 2011, I took in 14 little girls. Now these 14 girls had, they were sexually abused and they're from five to about 13, 14 years old. And um, I, I, have you ever, it was kind of like walking in the stream and all of a sudden you're in a waterfall and you know exactly this is where the Lord wants you. Where were you at at the time? I was in Kenya. How, how did you, how, you're not from Kenya, so how did you get to Kenya? No, uh, I'm not from Kenya, I'm from San Diego. <laughs> um, my husband and my three boys and I, we moved out to Kenya in 2006 as missionaries. And so we were doing missionary work in Kenya at the time. And um, I wanted to do something different. I didn't want, I had worked with other organizations up until that time, until I took in the girls. Um, but really believed the Lord was calling me to do something else with, with little girls that were sexually and physically abused, even some that had, um, it's called FGM, female genital mutilation. So uh, providing a rescue, a haven for these girls to be able to come and escape what has happened to them and really learn about Christ, learn about Him. So you, you take in 14 kids, but w w you and your family are living in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And so it's your husband and three kids? Three boys. Now these girls did not uh, live at our house. I rented a house that was kind of down the street from us. So I started more of a, a homeschool kind of. Like a host community yes, for them. Yes, yes, I had her t hired a teacher and um, a dorm mom and we started doing homeschool and the numbers started to grow. More little girls started to come, more girls that were abused, um, that needed a place of refuge. Um, in fact, the name Cindy's Hope comes from there was two little girls that were brought and the dad brought them and the dad the wife had passed away and the dad didn't want the girls anymore and i was in the states at the time and the person in charge of the girls the door mom said no more you can't we can't take any girls mom cindy's not here and sent the little girls and the dad away and that dad went and set his little house on fire with the girls inside with himself on side just wanted to kill himself and the girls. He, he was just, it was so hopeless for him at that time. Yes, yes. Um, the dad died. In the fire? In the fire. The girls were burned, um, uh, their extremities, their faces. They were in the hospital for three months. How old were the kids? They were eight and ten. Oh. Yes, and that's where Cindy's Hope really, the name came from. That when those little girls come for refuge, that they'll never be turned away. That they have hope in Him, hope in Jesus. That He will, He'll take anybody because that's He'll. It doesn't matter what kind of sinner you are. It doesn't matter what your background is. Um, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What was the town that you were in in Kenya at the time? We lived outside of Nairobi in a small town called Riru. Okay. And did the government give you financing assistance? No. <laughs> how how, how no. did you? How did you and your family afford to um, get a host home, hire a teacher and somebody to be the manager? And how, how did you afford to do that? I really, um, I've learned a lot over these years in terms of faith and the Word of God, and um, even as a missionaries before we started before I started taking in the girls. And my husband doesn't have anything to do with the ministry. He's a dentist and he does his dental work in Sudan and Mozambique and Uganda. So as he would come home, I would have more girls added to the, <laughs> and more apartments I was renting and different things. But 
I started praying. I was making a list. I know there's lots of women out there that make lists. So I was, ma I was making lists that I needed 14 new pairs of shoes. I needed underwear. I needed beds. And I was praying and I would have my list and I would write down how much it cost. And the Lord was bringing, excuse me, the provision. He was bringing exactly what I needed, what I prayed for. And I was like, wow, there's the list and there's the answer. And really noticing the Lord cares for these girls more than I do. And my God's not poor. My God isn't, um, he doesn't want them out on the street. He wants somebody to care for them. And he wants to use you. He wants to use me, if we're willing. So, so you're praying, and uh, how are you getting the word out to people? Because where's the money come Coming from? Up. I mean, you're, you're praying about it, but then all of a sudden, what? Somebody comes up and says, hey, I've got some extra money for this, for that, for something? Um, both. <laughs> um, I, at the beginning, I wrote some, I would write an email to somebody. I would be praying and somebody's name would pop in my mind, so I would write them an email. Hi, we need some underwear. Um, actually, not underwear. I was in the downtown. We have a school in the Muslim area. And so the call to prayer goes off five times a day in the Muslim zone. And I was like, this is a call for prayer, a call for underwear. <laughs> and uh, that prayer was answered really fast, actually. Um, and my little girls, they come without any underwear. I mean, it's a kind of a sign of poverty. They just yeah. come with their little dress on. Um, but I, we even have funds that come. People would, I was at church not too long ago and somebody said, Cindy, I've been meaning to send you something. Let me write you a check now. And I was like, sure, okay. <laughs> so, so the bottom line was the Lord provided for you yes. every time all the way through. Absolutely. We're gonna cut away, take a break. You're watching Stories That Matter with Cindy Mendoza. This is Cindy of Cindy's Hope. I'm sitting here with the boys and girls that will attend the school of Cindy's Hope. The closest school that they go to right now is 3.8 kilometers away and they have a student teacher ratio of 64 to 1. But you can make a difference. You can help these kids by helping support Cindy's Hope. In Psalm chapter 2, the Lord says, Ask of me and I will give you the nations. That is my prayer. Cindy's Hope is ministering to over seven different countries right now. The next school site, we will be ministering to the boys and girls in, from Reconciliation Village and Kimani District. Come join us at Cindy's Hope Academy. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Cindy Mendoza, and she has a ministry, Cindy's Hope. And if you missed the first part of this, you watch for one of the reruns because this is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back over just a little bit of it. You and your husband married, are you living in San Diego at the time? I, no, we, after we graduated, he's a dentist, dentist. and I'm, uh, my undergraduate graduate is in political science. We moved to Kentucky. Okay. So we and that's lived where in his Kentucky. family was from. Yes, sir. And then, uh, so initially when you head overseas uh, to, was a target base Kenya to begin with? Yes. And you were uh, sponsored by the local church that you were attending, you and your husband and uh, were attending? They, we... Sort of? Yes, yeah, sort of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Individual <laughs> sponsor, even now. Because when churches give um, to Cindy's Hope or to us as missionaries, they're giving about... Two hundred dollars or a hundred dollars a month. Yeah, but we need much more than a hundred dollars sure. a month to live overseas, and um, you're supposed to raise for a family five thousand a month. So usually churches don't give that much. That's a lot. Actually, I don't have one church that gives five thousand yeah. a month. Yeah, and on the screen we're going to be putting information about the contact information. So as people are watching this show and they want to contribute and be a part of this because as we're talking about it, it's obvious it takes a lot of money and a lot of effort yes. to have uh, to have boots on the ground as the old term goes, yes. you know, and you're in Kenya with the family. So when we were talking about this, you just told me about the story that there was a, a man and uh, his wife had predeceased him and the two girls, 
were with him and then he tried to kill, uh, commit suicide and take the whole family out at one time. The girls survived. And you only had one home available that was handling about 14 kids and I'm assuming that was maximum. Yes, at the time. Then what happens to Cindy's Hope? Well, after, um, after that happened to the two girls are Mercy and Faith. Um, that's their name? That's their names, Mercy and Faith. Wow. Yes. Um, so they were in the hospital for three months, but once I returned back to Kenya, we were just home for um, about six weeks in the summer, made moves to make sure we could take in any girls that needed help. And the numbers quickly grew from 634 or 38 to, I mean, they would just double wow. 64, where 530 we closed out this school term with 530 kids. For that first year there? No, no, not the first year, but this year. This year. This year, 530, 530 kids in three campuses. Three campuses. Are yes. the campuses close by? No, no. Okay. Um, one is um, 10 acres and it's it's not really in a town, but we say it's close to Engineer <laughs> and it's 10 uh, how acres. How close is that to the home base? Um, where we live, it's two hours away. Wow. Um, so you're commuting. One of my prayers is for a helicopter. Yeah. And <laughs> um, you commute a lot in Kenya. The other school is in a downtown. It's in a Muslim area. So we have Somali little girls, Ethiopian little girls, um, South Sudanese. And um, that's really an exciting location because we are in a Muslim neighborhood and we have Muslim children that we teach about Jesus Christ every day. How, how does the community handle that? Um, at first, we've been there about almost five years now, and that location, prior to opening it, we were at a, a conference with other missionaries, and the pastor was preaching, saying, if, if we would go into Somalia, if we would teach them about Jesus Christ, they wouldn't be bombing each other, they wouldn't be killing outsiders, they would know who their Savior is and who's going to go. And I was like, me, I'm going to go to Somalia. And my husband's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, he was sitting next you're, to me. You're already in Kenya. Yeah, time. we're in Kenya. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump over, you know. But he's like, you're not going to Somalia. And I was like. Because it was too dangerous. Yes, because it was too dangerous. So yes. how long have you been in Somalia, too? Well, uh, I kept praying. And th not even a week later, not even a week later, Doug, there's a small community in Nairobi called Little Mogadishu. Now this community, Mogadishu is the capital of Somalia. So it's kind of like a mini Chinatown. Okay. It's all full of Somali people. So I don't even have to go to Somalia. I just have to go to downtown Nairobi and start a school 30 minutes from my house and I can get all the Somali you kids. pick them up. Yeah. Yeah. And, t and taking care of them. Do they yeah. live in the facility with you? The, I don't Oops. board the Somali kids. They're, they're day students. So okay. they come in at 7 o'clock and they go home at 4 and we feed them. We give them snack wow. and they get to learn to read and write for free uh, because when I'm home in the States and I'm raising funds for these Somali kids. But it's... Um, it's exciting to me that we are... We're taken back what the enemy took. <laughs> well, you know, that's... 530, yes. and then that's multiple campuses, Three. multiple staff, Yes. and the safety of these kids, their health, their food. How, how do you make all this work? Um, it's a miracle. Well, Plural. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I know Miracles. you've said, I, I pray to the Lord, and uh, within a week it gets answered. Yes. But uh, you must be engaged in this aspect of it to get the word out, because there's, there are people who will help if they just know. And uh, that's why we're having this conversation here today, is to help get the word out because uh, what you're doing is a huge project. I, I can't imagine being so desperate as that father was to come in with the two little kids yes. and decide the best option that I can give to my family is to kill all of us. Yeah. You know, I, I can't imagine being that far down. Desperate. And you look around, you say, I can't work anywhere. I can't do anything. I have mm -hmm. nothing. I feel like I'm nothing and no relationship with the Lord apparently at the time. Right. And now these two little girls, mercy and hope? Faith. Faith. And uh, that's, that's just awesome. How, uh, so how old would they be now? They are, well, they're about 17. About 17? Yes. Are they and still in your program? They live with their grandmother. Oh. Yes. So um, about two years ago, they went back and lived with their grandmother so they can help 
take care of her and assist her and her, they don't have a, um, elderly care facilities yeah. in Kenya. Yeah. Um, so they get to live with her and go to a public school and help um, in the her family. Yeah, we're, yes. we're gonna cut away, take a break. You're watching Stories That Matter with Cindy Mendoza. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Cindy Mendoza. And uh, of course, this is Cindy's Hope, and she's in charge of that. Uh, well, actually, the Lord's in charge of that, yes, but sir. he lets you you uh, do the work on that. And we were talking about Kenya, and you're bringing kids in from Somalia for a day program. What else you got going? Well, um, coming up at Cindy's Hope, starting this January 2019, we will open another campus, and this school will be in Rwanda. Now, Rwanda is the site of the 1994 genocide where you have uh, their own countrymen killing each other. In the month of April of 1994, almost a million people, they killed one another. So you have a huge um, decrease in population, massacre, um, death. And um, I have a mutual friend that kept asking me to come to Rwanda. They needed education, they need Jesus Christ. And I honestly, Doug, I, I didn't wanna go. I was um, low in my faith maybe. <laughs> but I, I went, I went last year. And while I was there, the Lord was showing me all these different things. The, the amount, the sheer amount of children that need not only need to know Jesus, but they, I can use the platform that I have built in Kenya of education, have a platform of education in ESL, English as a second language. And um, in Rwanda, the government has changed everything over from French to English. And he also has, um, right now the county we're going into, 47% of the population are children. 47%? For, yes, so almost half of the county is all children. And they have a 64 to one student teacher ratio. They only go to school half day because there's not enough teachers, there's not enough schools. And if we could look like Elijah says to Gehiza in Second Kings, you know, Lord, open their eyes that they could see. Let them see the harvest, that I, there's a harvest of young boys and girls who can come to know Jesus Christ. Come to Cindy's Hope and learn about Jesus. Um, so, so somewhere in there, Cindy, it went from, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that, I can't do that, to all of a sudden after you went there and looked around and the hand went up and said, pick me, Lord, pick me, I yes. can do this. <laughs> yes. Um, well, before I made that big leap, and the Lord was showing me, the, I guess, the facts, the need, and um, two specific scriptures came to my mind. And really when the Lord is speaking to me, um, he speaks to me in his word. And I don't even have to be reading the word. I just, it kind of goes across like a little teletape. <laughs> and um, the first part, one was in Esther 4.14. Now we know, most of us know for such a time as this, for such a time as this, Doug, you've been raised up to, to take something. But 4.14a, says that Mordecai is admonishing Esther that if you don't go and do this, um, Esther, you and your household are gonna die, but I will pick someone else to come and save the Jews. And I was like, oh, so Cindy, do you wanna go to bat? Do you want to come and help these people or should I choose somebody else? Because I'm gonna do it, God says, I'm gonna do it. Do you want me to pick you? I'm like, heck yeah, pick me. Take me, <laughs> take, take me. me, pick me. Oh, that's awesome. So now what happens? Because you've got how many more, how many, the campus and how many people? Yes, yes. So I, um, well, just like Esther, she has to go and fast and pray because she has to get the strategy. You have to get this, Lord, what is the st strategy of how, how do you How are you going to do this? Yeah, how are we going to do this? How are we going to go before the king? And um, so I have six schools over the next five years to be built in Rwanda along the perimeter and close to these reconciliation villages which are in rural areas, and it's a reconciliation village, Doug, is perpetrators and survivors living in a neighborhood, living in a community together. Perpetrators from the genocide and survivors from the genocide. And Cindy's Hope will be ministering to those kids as wow. well as the kids in the community. Th that was so bad back in 94, as we were talking about uh, on break, that a uh, million people lost their lives, and it was so bad the UN pulled out and just, they couldn't do anything to keep them apart, and a million deaths, million murders within 
a month yes. in 94 that the UN said we can't we can't risk being even in here. The uh, UN That's had where you're at now. With yes, it. yes. Now, now the country of Rwanda is stable. The government is stable. Um, the people are not fighting. We don't have revolution. Um, it's a good um, place to be. It's reconciliation's a taken place yes, between sir. the the two fighting sides. Yes. Yeah, so they wow. are trying to rise up out of that. Um, Twenty four years ago. Um, it will be 25 years at this coming wow. April. Yes, what mm. the Lord is doing. Um, so where Cindy's Hope is going is to build schools around the perimeter in Rwanda. And the first one will open in January. And each school has a price tag of $350,000. Per building. Per, bu per campus. It's on five acres. And... Um, yeah, so it's exciting. And the, I was like, okay, God, well. And the more you walk in faith, the more he continues to pour out his provision, pour out his strength, uh, pour out his favor. And really, there's no other way you want to live. There's nothing else you'd rather do than walk with him. So you're talking five new buildings. Five new campuses. campuses. So that's five. Uh, a campus is considered five acres plus the building on it? Yes, it'll have more than one building because uh, they're called classroom blocks in, in Africa. Um, so it's multiple buildings. We have a church on site. We have a guest, a team house. So when visitors come from Kansas or Nebraska, we, teams that will come and minister to the community or the kids. So there's a guest house on site. There's a church on site because we want to minister to the community, wow. chapel, and then we have classrooms. Wow, Cindy, that's, you know, if my math's pretty close here, is one and three quarter million dollars. Yes. How, where's that come from? How's that happen? Well, actually, I'm asking, Doug, for 3.5 million because I need operating. Well, so. of course. You, you, you've <laughs> so got keep staff. keep going up. Yeah, you, yeah, you got staff. You've got people to yes. feed. And yes. uh, once, once <laughs> they're in, into your facility, I mean, they're sitting at the table. And yes. I can't imagine that anxiety of, well, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. And all these kids are sitting there looking yeah, to you. Not one time has the Lord ever left me high and dry. Huh? Even as we we were doing the dishes and cleaning up after dinner one time, and um, there was no food left in the cupboard. Now, your cupboard in Kenya is called um, the store. They call it the store. And it's um, it was completely empty. And... <laughs> The girls are wondering, what are we going to have tomorrow, Mom? There's no food. There's And food in Africa is like a bag of flour, a bag of rice, and yeah. sugar. But there, you mix it, and you make your japati or whatever. And I said, keep praying, God. Well, we, I don't know. Tomorrow's a new day, but we ate dinner today. But I'm thinking inside, hello, we need food tomorrow. <laughs> He's never failed you yet, has no, he? No. By the morning, I had money. We went shopping, and God provided, and we keep trucking. That's awesome. That's awesome. We've got to cut away, take a break. You're watching Cindy's Hope. This is Cindy of Cindy's Hope. I'm sitting here with the boys and girls that will attend the school of Cindy's Hope. The closest school that they go to right now is 3.8 kilometers away, and they have a student-teacher ratio of 64 to 1. But you can make a difference. You can help these kids by helping support Cindy's Hope. In Psalm chapter 2, the Lord says, Ask of me and I will give you the nations. That is my prayer. Cindy's Hope is ministering to over seven different countries right now. The next school site, we will be ministering to the boys and girls in, from Reconciliation Village in Kimani District. Come join us at Cindy's Hope Academy. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Cindy Mendoza. Cindy's Hope. Cindy, we've had a really, really good conversation, and it is so um, refreshing to see how the Lord is just working in your life. I see it all the time with people, and when we do the Stories That Matter, there's lots of stories. Mm. But, but boy, you're, you're, you're stepping way out there. I need this <laughs> much money, Lord, and I've got these many people to feed, and they're all going to be at the table. And uh, Lord, how are you going to do it? And every day he 
He, he feeds provides. Them. You know, like you said, I've never had one that uh, we went hungry for the day. Mm -hmm. Always been able to provide. Yes. How, the people that are watching this show and your efforts back here to raise money, how can people help? Um, well, there's two different ways. I used to think when we started that I really disliked fundraising. And the Lord has showed me over, over time, it's not about fundraising, it's getting other people involved yeah. in what the Lord is doing, that He's doing something awesome, yeah. miraculous, and you wanna be a part of it. You want to come on board, you wanna get on this ship because God is bringing in a harvest of souls, not only in Rwanda, but in Somalia, in Ethiopia, in Kenya, in South Sudan, and we are spreading the gospel to all these countries through the children, through Cindy's Hope, through education. And then they're bringing the gospel back to their families. Um, so it's, we definitely need financial support because we want to build the, the buildings, the schools, to teach these boys and girls about Jesus Christ every single day. When they wake up, when they walk across um, the road, they know who their Savior is. And also, come, come to Kenya. Come to Cindy's Hope. Come help. Yes. Awesome. Cindy, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. And God bless you, and He already has. Amen. Hope you've enjoyed <laughs> uh, Stories That Matter with Cindy Mendoza, Cindy's Hope.